Hey everybody, next week is my six months update. I am excited about it. And I thought as a little treat that we would do our video of Meet Scott today. So you guys had tons of great questions. I put them all together and we're gonna go over them. Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. I love hearing from you guys and I love being able to grow this channel to share this journey so other people can find what life changing this path is. Meet Scott. This is my other half that has been with me through this whole journey. And I am actually right brain. Uh, I'm the more intuitive one and creative. I do say some really dumb things, but then I say some brilliant things to offset it. So I kind of balance out. <laughs> so we'll just jump into the questions. The first question is, how did we meet? This might evolve into an argument. <laughs> no, I won't. So. Technically, we met when I was still at college in Ember Riddle with her older brother, um, but she, I did not remember her. She was uh, still a teenager. And then we met again years later uh, on online playing EverQuest 2. It's a video game. It's a video game. I had moved up to Minneapolis for college and it was very, very lonely up there because I had no family, no friends. I knew nobody when I moved up there for college. And so I started playing a video game and my brother was playing with Scott. Playing with me and that's how we got to know each other is through her brother who was my uh, college roommate. And that's how we met. Okay, the next question is, how did you propose? How did I propose? Okay, a little bit of a story here. Uh, so Amanda and I were going through something called the Landmark Forum in which you're able to kind of explore your past and go through some lessons about language and how personality forms, things like that. The lesson, it was graduation night and you can have friends and family. The lesson was kind of more general for people. It was about but in language. For example, I want a horse, but I live in an apartment. Well, the, the lesson is that they're not really associated. By using the word but, I, I associate them that, that somehow living in an apartment means I can't have a horse. If you use and, I live in an apartment and I want a horse, then you can separate those out and do those things. And it's learning how to, to work that. Anyways, uh, somebody kind of came up and went through the audience and he was asking people, uh, give me something you want. Um, I want to propose to her, but I don't know how, is what somebody else said. And Amanda's like, Oh my God, and she was like super excited and he asked a few other people and came to Amanda and Amanda, Amanda's like, so. Uh, You're skipping the whole on, part. You're on. skipping the part. I'm not, just something. I, I am nice. not, I am not a center stage person. I'm actually quite shy. And so Scott was giving me eyebrows of like, what are you doing? There's over 250 people in this room and you're raising your hand to talk. Yeah, I know, just <laughs> my part of the story. Anyways, so uh, he comes to her and, and she's like, well, I want to marry Scott, but he hasn't proposed yet. And then the whole room is like, oh, and he-, he It was the most glorious moment I have ever heard of just 250 people at the same exact time, just like- <sighs> Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, so uh, he goes through and he talks to you know the different people who gave their examples, and he comes to us. So what happens? Is I just like oh no wait just hold on. Uh, I I started moving my chair back and it's really nice the people around me started moving their chairs back because they're all in rows. And I knelt down and I said Amanda, will you marry me? And she's like yes yes yes. And it was so just it was just amazing. Everybody's like oh. And it turns out that you know one of the guys I was in a, a group with. Um, in that forum, his name was BJ, and he was a Jewer. And he was so moved by that, and so like, just thought it was awesome, he would do our rings at cost. And so our rings that have just been a wonderful symbol of our marriage. Uh, I gotta design them. She gotta design them, was you know part of that proposal experience. And you know I still remember BJ to this day. What drew you to Amanda in the beginning of your relationship? In 2011, I was in a pretty dark place, and I had to learn some things I didn't learn as a younger man. Uh, I learned what I valued in myself and others as a consequence of that. And what I value the most is caring for other people in the world around us. And so I wanted to be with somebody like that. 
And so when I met Amanda, I really got to see that she cared for people very much. She cared for her family. And that what was in her heart was one that wanted to make the world a better place. And you all see that in her videos. It just comes out naturally because that's what's in her heart. And that's what drew me to Amanda because that's what I want. How did you view weight issues before you met or when you were first together? Have your thoughts changed over time as you watched me struggle? Good question. So when we first met, uh, Amanda was a little heavy, more than I would have liked, I guess. I was like 50 pounds overweight. Yeah. 60. Um, but beautiful woman, and again, what was in her heart was really what mattered to me. Now, I also kind of came from a, a perspective of, you can see I'm kind of thin, I was 135 pounds for most of my life. I didn't actually start gaining weight until I was like 135 years old. So I had this perspective that, you know, if you're overweight, it's just because you're lazy or something, like a lot of people do. And being with Amanda helped me really kind of change that, that it's learned behavior and it's habits that stem from most likely something happened in our childhood or adolescence that uh, affected our outlook on ourselves and our lives. And, you know, going through the forum, was, that's kind of why we did that together, was that's how I learned to love myself and forgive myself. That that was important for, for being able to be able to get past, like, weight problems. And so this entire time, it's, you know, kind of just waiting for Amanda to learn to love and forgive herself. I know it's there. She's a wonderful woman. And she's worthy of it, but I think that's what a lot of people have to learn to do. And that's, again, like I, you know, lessons I forgot to learn or failed to learn when I was young was I never gave myself grace. And that led me down a dark path. What do you love most about me? What do I love most about you? Your answer better be the dogs. Sorry. <laughs> Not the dogs. It's your heart. That's what I love most about you. You have a caring, loving, giving heart. And, you know, I mean, as I just said previously, I kind of had this attitude about, you know, being overweight is that you're just lazy. So, of course, I kind of was a jerk early on in our relationship and I would get angry about things. But Amanda always gave me grace and I learned to give grace also and that's part of the relationship. So what I love most about Amanda is her heart and not only that, the integrity to her word in our marriage. Because there were some times, like, we just had some terrible fights. But she's like, I'm not going to get divorced. It's my word. And it really, it really stands out as the most important thing about her is what is in her heart and keeping to that. What do you do for a living? Uh, I run a small home health agency with a contract therapist providing physical therapy and occupational therapy in the Phoenix market. That is actually where we were at, was in Arizona, and I was a physical therapist assistant, so I actually treated patients. I was a big part of our business because I saw tons and tons of patients for their physical therapy while Scott was at home running at home, and now I just help him with what needs to be done because we can do it remotely. We found, uh, you know, the pandemic and all. Do you ever think we will eat different diets? No, I don't. I, I think that we will always be, to be honest, from now on, carnivore or... Ketovore. Ketovore. Like, it's the health benefits we've been able to discover uh, over the years we've been trying so many diets. And not only now, like, I love steaks. I oh, know. what was the oddest diet that we did other than carnivore? Okay, the oddest diet we did was nothing but white potatoes. Because, you know, I would just have a little tub for lunch at Chase, and that was an analyst there, and I would just eat white potatoes. That was just very, very odd. No butter, no salt. What did you feel when you saw me struggling? Um, sometimes it was anger, and sometimes it was um, just despair because I didn't know what to do to help. But most of the time it was just empathy because I knew where it had come from. It was, you know, self-anger, self-loathing that, that she was beating herself up. And so 
you know, part of it was the anger is like, just stop thinking like that, right? That, you know, it's standard guy thing, solve problems, stop doing X, right? That doesn't work that way. But, uh, you know, the other part was, you know, the empathy, like, I wish I could do more, that, you know, to show her. I, I feel that learning grace is not just about, like, learning to forgive other people, but it's learning to give yourself. Grace is unearned forgiveness. And as a young man, I was in, in church as a Christian, and I learned what grace was, and I gave grace freely to other people, but I never really gave it to myself. That's one of the things I had to learn. And I had to wait for a man to kind of learn that, that she had to learn to forgive herself for, you know, doing X, Y, Z. How did you cope with those feelings? Oh. By eating Kit Kats? Yeah, actually, by the, oddly enough, I learned the behavior of coping by eating crappy food, like Kit Kats. Or so this is something that I realized, Scott, when we first started dating, you were what, probably 140 pounds ish. Yeah, maybe 140. There. And he's like 5'10 yep. and a half, 5'11, something like that. And he didn't eat great because he was eating a lot of, he said he used to date Marie Callender's. So he wasn't eating... Pot pie every, <laughs> twice a day. You he know. wasn't eating good quality food, but he also wasn't gorging on sugar. And I realized as years went on, we dated and then got married, that he had turned into kind of a sugar addict to cope with his feelings. He had just literally watched me over the years eat my feelings, and I realized I had pushed that onto him. It's like watching the person you love the most in the world commit suicide very, very slowly. Mm -hmm and being powerless to stop it. How has the changes in me during this journey changed you? Uh, for one, I'm far more uh, disciplined about you know, the things I need to do and trying to be on top of them and be a good example. I'm a lot more hopeful about our direction. And I, I knew for a long time we were kind of just treading water, but I feel like a lot more optimistic about our future and how we're gonna do it. In your opinion, what's your best quality? Do you want to answer this? Yeah, go ahead. Because I, you know, to me, I don't think it's generosity. I mean... I think it's empathy, which then leads to kindness. Your ability to look at, like, my situation or others and empathize, not sympathize, but empathize with them and to show kindness and grace. Thank you. Do you hear Rosie snoring behind us? I do hear Rosie snoring behind us. <laughs> We've got a wonderful furry family. When I chose to do carnivore, did it concern you? Uh, no, it did not concern me at all. Uh, I saw the results from uh, her brother and our brother-in-law, and I also just saw the results of some of the people that I knew. Previously, we had read uh, a book called The Primal Blueprint with Mark Sisson, or Sison, and we learned a lot about how our bodies originally kind of worked, and so it made a lot of sense to me. I wasn't really concerned about it. Okay. Was it the right decision for you? Absolutely. Best decision. I love it because I feel so much more healthy and active. What do you want my supporters to know about you? To know about me. Um, hmm. I will answer this. Well, you can. I want to think about it. You... Well, you can think about it while I answer it. Okay. Okay. He has the most caring, loving heart I have ever met. He cries along with me in sweet romantic movies. And when he watches my videos that I've edited and I've been crying, I turn around and he's usually always tearing up. He cares immensely about people. And I think that's why we work so well together is because we both do. And dogs. Yes. And, and, dogs. and cats. But like dogs are number one. Kind of what she says, but I'll just <laughs> sum it up in, in the fact that I, what I want you to know about me is that I believe in you that you can do this. I believe that you have the power, every person has the power to enrich and direct their life the way they want to. And that's what Carnivore has enabled her. That's also what Jordan Peterson has done. That's just, she's learned some of the lessons in a different way than I learned in 2011, which is great. What did you first think when I told you I was gonna do Carnivore? Woot woot, meat. No. Okay, we'll try this one. <laughs> uh, yeah. At least it's not potatoes this time. <laughs> right. It was more like, all right, why not? You know, I have tried everything else. We did kale shakes. Kale for this dude. 
that ate three calendars. Okay. At what point or moment, if there was one specifically, did you realize that I was serious about taking control of my health and wellness? It was when I was crying in the emergency room, wailing. No, I think it no? was it was after we had been on car for a week, for a week, and you like I think I tempted you with some other food or something. And you're like, nope, not going to do it. And it's because I had my habits still there too. I didn't have you know a visit to the hospital to smack me around, but that really helped me kind of get aligned of like, okay, this is really she really means this, and that also helped us get back to some Jordan Peterson stuff to relearn some lessons to. That, you know, focus on the mind stuff. Okay. Do we eat the same meals? We do not eat the same meals. I eat all kinds of leftovers. Yes, After, oh yes, we do eat the same meals. Most of the time. We always eat the same meals, just, just sometimes his are leftovers. Fresh, hers are fresh and mine are old. We call the it's joke. two decades of eating as a single guy. I have a cast iron stomach. I the, eat stuff that's three weeks old. <laughs> that's the joke, is I have three days, actually by the second day I'm iffy on leftovers, Week later, he's still eating it. Weeks later. And he's never had food poisoning. I've had food poisoning so many times, it's crazy over the years. So I'm very eh about leftovers. So I, I don't care. I used to have some, I remember there's the ham with some like kind of slimy stuff on it. I washed oh, off the slime. Oh, don't tell him that was gross. <laughs> washed off the slime. <laughs> Put it in my microwave. And <laughs> Ew. When did you do that? Oh, that was years ago. Before we were together? I think so, yes. Oh, God, that's disgusting. Yes. How much weight have you lost? I've lost 25 pounds on carnivore. Uh, it's been really, really fantastic. I'm actually, I want to lose a little bit more, but I have a feeling that, you know, as we're working out and doing more stuff, it's going to really kind of not be lost. It's going to transition to muscle. So 25, it's been great. And the best part is, is he didn't have any weight anywhere but his abdomen, and it's almost completely gone. You're what, probably wear size 30 now? Yeah, back to 30. Yeah. You have to understand, until I was like 35, I wore size 30 pants uh, and was at 135, 140 pounds for forever. What has changed health-wise for you since eating carnivore? Uh, I have a lot more energy, a lot more active, um, more focused. Uh, my skin looks better. Like overall, like, oh, my eczema. So... I would kind of get stress right now. He has, he has stress eczema, stress induced eczema. Stress eczema, but you know, my hands, right, right now it's actually more like freezing cold hands. His hands would actually turn into like full on blisters on his hands, like five, six, seven open on both his hands. It actually looked really terrible. Yeah, so it's gotten better. It's almost gone. Yeah. What's your favorite thing about carnivore? Dishes. I'm very, very dogmatic about dishes. I'll reason, wash the same coffee cup every day for the rest of my life to use only one coffee cup. He gets mad if I get two cups. And my cardboard, <laughs> the dishes are so easy. We used to make like chicken marsala and there'd be like 30 bowls and four pans and like making the sauce and the chicken and sauteing like the mushrooms and the onions and all this and like, it was a tornado in the kitchen. Now, there's a plate for prepping meat. There's a plate for eating me, and there's a fork, and that's it. <laughs> oh my God, I love it. <laughs> Your favorite thing about carnivore for me? My favorite thing about carnivore for you is, okay, so for a long time I've tried to cook and make things that she will eat that are somewhat healthier or not, you know, eating bad stuff like Wendy's. She's like, oh, I don't really want that. Or she'd take it and be like, you know. So my favorite thing is that whatever I cook, she eats now. Everything. Like, there's almost nothing. Like, if it's bad, of course, I'll have the leftovers. But she will at least eat that one serving, that that meal. So when we got together, I did all the cooking because Scott never actually learned how to cook. And I'm actually quite a, I'm quite a good cook. I like to make things, like, by scratch and things like that. But I do make the kitchen a bomb. She taught me how to cook. I did teach him how to cook. He's actually quite excellent at the grill. My favorite thing is Scott cooks almost every single meal because most of the time it's either eggs and bacon, which I, for whatever reason, suck at making, or it's meat on the grill, and he's the go man for the grill. So I cook very little. My favorite thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what are your dietary intentions long term? 
I think we kind of already answered this. We kind one. of already answered. It's it's going to be uh, carnivore, carnivore slash keto. I, I really, I don't foresee having a lot of carbs down the road. Like mm -hmm. even a burger is. Like, I really just don't need the carbs. If there's something like holiday meals, like there's something we really want, like sweet potatoes. Sweet potatoes. Or those pastries my sister-in-law made that I gobbled a few of those. He did. He, I ate one. She I had one. And the only reason he didn't eat another one is because... because the last one was for our niece. And so I was like, all right, I'm not going to make her cry tomorrow. <laughs> my little niece, he wanted one. And I told Scott... She already had one. She had two. But the first, the, the last one was nah, the next day. Nah, nah, nah. She had one. Whatever. Okay, I had a lot, so... He did. But, you but know... But that's all I'm going to have for, like, you know, long-term meal plans. What is your favorite carnivore meal? Honestly, I like the meat mush. The meat the, mush? The variety that comes with the meat mush. And, like, I can spice it different ways. Do you just want. like it because it's using all leftovers and we don't throw anything away, too? That's pretty much it, yes. Okay. Favorite meal of any kind? Of any kind. Not carnivore? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's still going to be a giant baked potato <laughs> with a tire stick of butter. I knew. I knew. I with it was chopped be. onions and just a, a, a blanket of cheese melted on it and bacon bits on top. I mean, I used to have these platters that would be like three or four, and I would just put some ram wrap over and put it back in the refrigerator and eat it for the next meal. Like that's, that was it. How has your role changed in the relationship and what work, if any, have you needed to do within yourself to accommodate for the changes and growth in the marriage? So the work I've had a, like in the relationship is be more active and focused on the things that I can be doing now that more time's freed up because Amanda participates so much more and that like it was up to me to pick up all the dog poop before and that would be a task that I, I so we did and almost all the time I'd have to do all the dishes so now that Amanda can do a lot more house chores and do a lot more activities then I need to find out what else I can be doing around the house to make it better so that's where it's kind of really changed. Did you need to do any work internally to accommodate these growth and changes? Um, I still have to work internally. Uh, but what kind? Selfishness. So, like, my kind of default is probably I'd rather just sit back and play some video games or read a book or read something online uh, instead of work at something that is productive. And... When I'm productive, I'm happy. But there's times where like, I start beating myself for being unproductive and then I get even more unproductive and I get back into that spiral of like beating myself up for not doing the things I should be doing. And Amanda's covered this in a couple of her Jordan Peterson videos. So that's what I have to work on is that I have to give myself grace when I'm being lazy and be productive and get that dopamine and be more productive. Like one of the things that was that was a dynamic of a relationship before was that Amanda didn't have a lot of energy uh, or a lot of mobility to do things. So I kind of went down to that level. Like, you know, that's where I mm. was relaxed and liked to be at. So we would play a lot of video games or we'd play some board games or... We sat all the time because I wasn't walking the dogs. I wasn't going to the store either because just... The, that little bit of walking exhausted me or my back hurt so bad, I just stopped doing it. Right. And so the other part was that because I was really a caregiver in a lot of senses, like I didn't have any you know, me time, um, so that's what I would want to do. My, my downtime would be like sitting and playing a computer game, which is not worth it. It's better to get things done and have that dopamine. Do you have any shred of insecurity or feel threatened by my goals? Coming from the point that you were more of a caregiver to me because you had to do everything. I wasn't physically able to do it, nor did I have the drive to do it. Does that make you feel insecure or threatened in any way that you aren't going to be or haven't needed to be a caregiver to me in any way, shape or form? Because okay. you got used to it. Uh, so yeah, I did get used to being a caregiver, but I never wanted to be a caregiver. Uh, I. You know, when I was single, I was like, I'm not going to be any woman's pocketbook. I'm not her ticket to life. Uh, I want her to, you know, be equal and carry her own weight, so to speak. 
<laughs> no pun I, intended. I, I do care about <laughs> oh, weight. Right. But, uh, you know, because Amanda you know, wants to uh, really get healthy and that is beneficial for, for both of us. It's not that uh, I lose a place in the relationship. It's that I, I gain the freedom to be, to be better and do more. And, you know, we're both aligned in that goal of, of both of us being healthy so we can be parents. And the other part of that is that I guess there's a little bit of a threat in the sense that I can't be lazy anymore, right? I can't be like uh, coming home, sitting down and just reading games and reading, reading books or, or playing video games and screwing around because Amanda's too tired. She's actually wants to be active and do things. So I need to, too. So I need to step up my game and be a more productive human. And that is good, uh, and that's actually what I want because I'm happier that way. Especially when you start having kids, you gotta be like busting your chops. How did you handle my <laughs> depression? Specifically, what motivated you to keep supporting me when I was at my worst? So the best way I can describe handling your depression was just trying to keep you going, which was spending time with you when you like just holding you. Um, and try to make it through the day so you can go to sleep and get a new day and maybe a new perspective. It's very hard sometimes because even that didn't, that didn't work. But what let me keep doing it was because, you know, as you know, I was there in 2011. I wanted the end of my life. And I learned the way out. So I just had to wait for you to learn the way out. And that's what that's what made it worth it. Because I knew there was a way out and I knew you'd find it. Yeah. Has your food shopping, cooking, or domestic habits changed over the past several months? If so, specifically how? Okay, so specifically, the shopping's are a lot different because the food is like very simple what we want. Kind of repeat the same thing. I go shopping with him. Sometimes I go by myself. Uh, the habits about like cleaning and how the house is has been so much better. We do a lot more laundry. I do a lot of the dishes. I pick up most of the dog poop. Mm -hmm. I sweep. I don't the... have to get you water every day. Yeah, I sweep the front porch. I vacuum most of the time. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Well, we split that, but. Well, I mean, the middle and downstairs, I vacuum a lot more than you, which is yeah. fun. It doesn't really matter who does what. Yeah. Uh, laundry but, gets washed, not really folded, because neither of us like that. Overall, but. I would just say we're more functional. I think that we're just more active and functional, our houses just run better. Scott cooks all the time. That's the biggest. Yep. <laughs> it's, you know, I will say. She helps with work while I'm cooking, so it, it works out. What I will say is carnivore, the biggest difference I think with it too, is because it's so simplified, there's only so many things you can do that it just makes going to the grocery store easy. It makes cooking very simple. Cooking, clean up, um, all that. It's just... Yeah, because some of my recipes I made, like uh, my homemade uh, sun-dried tomato alfredo. I mean, it was days to make it because you had to make the sun-dried tomatoes days before. And just, it, it was and a task to the make The best it. part is like, what do you want to eat for your few hours? I don't know, what do we have? I don't know, pull something out of the freezer. And that's <laughs> what you're having. Like, it was, it's that easy. You just pull it out, leave it out, and the, freezes, the throw default, it on the grill. The default is, we don't know what we want to eat, we're gonna eat a steak. Or bacon and eggs. Or bacon and eggs, that's his thing. Yeah. Mine's a steak. Or some cheese. Yeah, yeah. I'm a Swiss cheese a hulk. He is. A, I told him he was a cheese Swiss cheese monster earlier. Which dogs prefer you over me or feel especially close? Uh, none of them. They <laughs> all love Amanda more than me. What's the real answer? Uh, Sadie's very close to me. Rosie was my dog originally, but Rosie, Amanda went to uh, Virginia a year Last ago. Year. Two years ago almost. Something like that. Yeah, and uh, she stole her. You know? I did not. She used to take Rosie to go Th to home. This home. is what happened. Ryu was mine. I may have stole her from my sister when I lived in Minnesota. Ryu was mine. Scott had Rosie. And then we got together, got married. So we had two dogs. And then I wanted a puppy. I'd never had a puppy in my life. So we went to the animal shelter and we got Annie. 
and Annie was a spitfire. She just absolutely had so much energy, and Rosie and Ryu are 13 now. Yeah. They're four or five, and she literally would just dart under Rosie, bite her legs. Would you're, do, like, you're my mom? <laughs> she would do what I call the mouth inspections. She'd stick her whole little head in Rosie's mouth and like lick her teeth. Don't ask me. Yeah. Rosie let her do it, but she was driving poor Rosie insane. So I convinced Scott to let me get a puppy for the puppy, and that's how we ended up with the fourth dog. So. And, but Sadie's actually closer to me because we just, her broken foot when she, we first got her, I spent all the kinds of times with her. I was always the one that got her in and out of the kennel and fed her and took care yeah. of her a lot. Because I was working 70 and 80 hours a week yeah. at this point, seven days really, a week. She was working really hard as a PTA and I was and like running the business and I would have a little bit of time between things to do stuff like that. And but, so Scott got to spend all this time with her and stole my puppy's puppy. Yes, but Annie, Annie just loves snuggles. So Annie loves most, of me. The time, most of the time that's you. That's because I let her snuggle me at nighttime. Yes. And Rosie, Rosie used to be Scott's, but I went on a trip and took her and Ryu with me to go visit my mom a couple years ago. And anytime my mom was working on her house, so we'd go to Lowe's a lot, I'd take Rosie with me. And Rosie, I call she's such a good go dog. She loved going, loved going into Lowe's. And she abandoned Scott and she now is my dog. No matter what room I'm in, she follows she me. Follows. Yeah, my, my, I have a little tiny brown shadow. She has a larger black shadow. I got, I got Follows my... Follows her around everywhere. <clears throat> I got my big black shadow dog, and then Annie shadows me pretty much. And Ryu, Ryu is... She's kind of independent. She's, she's the a, alpha. She's an, uh, the alpha, but she's also spicy. Yeah. You do not... She does not do what she doesn't want to do, and you better not tell her, because she ain't going to listen. She spends most of the time up on the couch. Ryu is Amanda in dog form. Anyways, <laughs> will we be transitioning the dogs to the ancestral diet? No. No. We cannot afford to feed four we, dogs. We can't afford it. Even though I work from home and it sounds great. Um, we can't afford that. We can't afford that. And the thing is, is what they do get is they get prescription dog food because Ryu has had from the time she was young um, some gastrointestinal issues and she can't have things like chicken and stuff like that because it causes issues for her. So she gets prescription dog food and so does Rosie. And the puppies get some version of something or rather. My sister, I'm actually very Meat lucky. Meat and potatoes. Meat and potatoes. <laughs> I'm very lucky that my sister is their vet. So yeah. I have someone I can constantly ask questions and she's great. So they get the best, uh, best is doggo care they can get. So that is all the questions. And you've met Scott, and now you can imagine him snickering behind the camera, laughing at his terrible jokes half the time I cut out. They're not terrible jokes. They're, they're pretty such, funny. They're such But she jokes. comes up with some real zingers, like two balls in one mouth. <laughs> Why would you bring that up? That was, com that was just... Or titty bitty or something, or itty bitty titty. I said itty bitty titty and it was my finger I would just I don't even know it just came out of my mouth okay right. anyways thank you guys so much for taking the time to listen to our silly craziness and getting to know my other half I appreciate you thank you so much again for the kindness and support and for being so motivational to me and honestly to other people on the channel I really appreciate all you guys and I will talk to you soon bye Meat and potatoes. Meat <laughs> and potatoes. She's going to say meat and potatoes at least once, if not a dozen times. Let me actually get the intro in. Okay. <laughs> Stick with butt and horse, <laughs> horse butt. <laughs> horse butt. Okay. Go ahead. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, why are you answering? I'm looking at you. Just don't. Did it start again? Yes. Recording this devil eye I'm getting right now. Daggers are coming out. I'm dying. Just ignore it. They want water. That's fine. They can go upstairs. These bums. Oh! <laughs>